Hello students, in previous session uh, we have studied uh, the different components of uh, Bitcoin. Uh, so we have to go into the details of these components. Uh, so in this uh, session uh, we, are, we, will, we will try to focus on uh, the different types of data structures, uh, transaction data structure, uh, input data structure and uh, output data structure. So this is the syllabus of unit 2, uh, this syllabus is uh, divided into two parts, uh, first part is about the Bitcoin and Bitcoin network and second part of the syllabus is about the consensus mechanism in Bitcoin network. Uh, we have to study the different types of uh, security mechanisms uh, like proof of work, hash cash, uh, then Bitcoin proof of work attacks on proof of work, monopoly problem, uh, proof of stake. So all these topics are related to the security and these topics we have to study in second part of the unit. We are studying the first part of the uh, unit second in that uh, we have studied uh, the topics like payments, uh, double spending, uh, then we are studying the uh, Bitcoin uh, components. So we know that the uh, Bitcoin uh, was introduced in uh, 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto and its practical implementation then occurred in uh, 2009. Uh, in 2008 a ground breaking uh, paper entitled uh, Bitcoin peer to peer electronic cash system was written uh, by the Satoshi Nakamoto and uh, the Satoshi Nakamoto introduced uh, the concept of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a decentralized network uh, in this uh, Bitcoin uh, this digital currency or cryptocurrency is not controlled by any uh, central authority or uh, federal, federal authority. Uh, so this relies on the uh, peer to peer network and it uses the consensus mechanism uh, to verify the uh, transactions. So we have studied the definition of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a combination of peer-to-peer -peer network, protocol, software and that facilitated the creation and uses of digital currency named uh, Bitcoin. Uh, so decentralization of the currency um, was made possible for the first time with the invention of uh, Bitcoin and as we know that uh, the double spending problem is resolved in the uh, Bitcoin network. And then in previous session, we have studied uh, the different components of Bitcoin. The first component of the, component of the Bitcoin is digital keys. Uh, private keys are used to digitally sign the transaction and public keys are used by the nodes uh, to verify the uh, transactions. And then addresses, uh, sender and uh, receiver addresses. And then transaction, transaction is the core of the uh, Bitcoin network, uh, transactions are not uh, encrypted and these transactions are publicly visible in the uh, Bitcoin network. Uh, so blockchain miners, miners are nothing but nodes that validate the transaction that verify, verify the transactions and for verifying the transactions, miners get the uh, reward. Then Bitcoin network, Bitcoin network is a peer to peer network. Uh, this network is nothing but the blockchain network. Blockchain provides the infrastructure for uh, Bitcoin. And then wallet, wallet is a software. Uh, this wallet is on client side. Uh, the customers or users of uh, Bitcoin network can use this wallet software. Uh, to perform the various functions such as receiving and sending the Bitcoin uh, then to store the private and uh, public keys and also to store the um, Bitcoins. Uh, so in previous session also we have studied uh, digital keys on the Bitcoin network uh, 
पजेशन ऑफ बिटकॉइन्स एंड ट्रांसफर ऑफ वैल्यू वाई आर ट्रांजेक्शन इज रिलायंट ट्रांजेक्शन द ट्रांसफर ऑफ वैल्यू इज डिपेंड ऑन प्राइवेट कीज पब्लिक कीज एंड एड्रेसेस सो इन बिटकॉइन नेटवर्क ई सी सी इलेप्टिक कर क्रिप्टोग्राफी इज यूज टू जनरेट द पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट की इन द बिटकॉइन नेटवर्क एंड प्राइवेट कीज आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी केप्ट सेफ्ट एंड नॉर्मली रिसाइड्स ओनली ऑन द ओनर साइड पार प्राइवेट कीज आर यूज टू डिजिटली साइन द ट्रांजेक्शन प्रूविंग द ओनरशिप ऑफ द बिटकॉइन्स एंड पब्लिक कीज एक्जिस्ट ऑन द ब्लॉक चेन एंड ऑल द नेटवर्क ऑल द नोट्स ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स कैन सी द पब्लिक की एंड पब्लिक कीज आर डिराइव फ्रॉम द प्राइवेट की ड्यू टू देयर मैथमेटिकल रिलेशनशिप एंड वंस द ट्रांजेक्शन इज साइंड विद द प्राइवेट की दिस ट्रांजेक्शन इज ब्रॉडकास्टेड ऑन द बिटकॉइन नेटवर्क एंड पब्लिक कीज आर यूज बाय द नोट्स टू वेरीफाई दैट ट्रांजेक्शन सो वी हैव स्टडीड हाउ द ट्रांजेक्शन आर प्रोसेस्ड इन द बिटकॉइन नेटवर्क एंड ब्लॉक चेन नेटवर्क ऑल्सो so we know the addresses uh, a bitcoin address is created by taking the uh, corresponding public key um, of a private key and, and then uh, hash function is used twice uh, first sha256 hash algorithm is used and then ripmd 160 algorithm is used and uh, this uh, algorithms will reject the 160 bit hash and this hash is prefixed by the uh, version number and finally uh, this hash is encoded with the base 58 check encoding scheme uh, so bitcoin addresses are 26 to 30 five characters long and begin with the uh, digit 1 or 3 uh, a uh, typical address looks like a string uh, as shown in the uh, slide so this we have studied in the previous session also then base 58 check encoding bitcoin addresses are encoded using the uh, base 50 58 check encoding and this encoding is used to limit the confusion between various characters uh, because of different fonts 0 and o may look similar then 1 and uh, roman 1 Uh, these characters may look uh, same in different fonts so the encoding uh, the en this encoding scheme uh, base 58 check encoding scheme basically takes the binary byte arrays and converts them into the human readable uh, strings uh, so as we know that uh, the addresses uh, this uh, you, uh, base 58 check encoding is used for uh, encoding the addresses addresses generated uh, from the public key and then hash function is used twice uh, first hash function is uh, used is sha256 and second hash function is rip md 160 and then some transactions require multiple private keys some transaction needs to be signed by Uh, multiple uh, private keys and uh, in practical terms it means that in order to release the coins a certain set of signatures are required and this is known as m of n multi signatures uh, so hence uh, here m represents a threshold that means the minimum number of signatures required uh, from n number of keys to release the uh, bitcoin suppose there are n number of private keys and from that n number of private keys how many uh, signatures are essential uh, to sign the uh, transaction uh, so that number is nothing but the m uh, if there are uh, 10 private keys and if three keys are essential uh, to sign the transaction uh, so n is 10 and m is uh, 3 and this uh, three uh, the transaction must be signed by the uh three uh, private keys uh then transactions 
are the core of the bitcoin uh, system transaction can be as simple as just sending some bitcoins to a bitcoin address or it can be quite complex depending on the requirement and each transaction is composed of at least one input and output input input can be uh, input uh, can be thought as as coins being spent uh, that have been created in a uh, previous transactions and outputs as uh, being uh, created uh, so if a transaction is mining new coins then there is no need of input and therefore a digital signature is not uh, required if transaction is uh, for mining purpose for verification purpose then there is no need of uh, inputs and there is no need of digital signature also so there are two types of transaction uh, coin based transaction and uh, regular transaction uh, so every block uh, uh, in bitcoin blockchain contains one coin based transaction included by the miners uh, then themselves to be able to mine new coins so this uh, coin based transaction is for uh, verification purpose and this uh, transaction is included by the miners uh, uh, to mine the new coins and they do not have the control on how many coins they can mine uh, in every block because it is controlled by the network uh, itself so uh, and then uh, second type of transaction is regular transactions so regular transactions are very similar to currency exchanges in general uh, where one is trying to uh, send some amount of money some amount of bitcoins uh, to the another so these are the uh, regular transactions uh, in this transactions can include sending uh, some bitcoins to some other uh, node in the network and coin based transaction is for the miners uh, miners uh, use these transactions for verification and this coin based transactions and miners don't have control how many number of coins they can mine uh, in every block uh, because it is controlled by the network uh, itself uh, then transaction life cycle uh, we have studied how the transactions are processed, processed in the Bitcoin and blockchain. Processing of the transaction in Bitcoin network and blockchain network is uh, similar. Uh, so, uh, a user, uh, the first step is a user sends a transaction using wallet software. Uh, in Bitcoin network, uh, on user's uh, node or mobile, uh, there is a wallet software and uh, user sends a transaction using a, this wallet software uh, or some other uh, interfaces and the wallet uh, software signs the transaction uh, using the sender's private key this uh, transaction is signed by the uh, sender's private key and then uh, as we know that uh, after signing the transaction with the private key uh, the transaction is broadcasted to the bitcoin network using a uh, flooding uh, algorithm uh, then what is the next step as in the bitcoin or blockchain uh, network next step is mining mining means verification of the transaction uh, so mining nodes mining nodes are also called miners uh, who are listening for the transactions and this line mining nodes will verify and include this transaction in the next block to be mined uh, just before the transactions are placed in the uh, block uh, before the transactions are placed, uh, before uh, the block is created, uh, before the transaction is finalized, before the transaction is committed, uh, the transactions are placed in a special memory, uh, memory buffer called transaction pool. And in this transaction pool, uh, transactions are kept for temporary purpose, uh, purpose before finalization. In previous session, uh, also we have studied uh, this transaction pool. Uh, so we, uh, there are uh, first step is. Uh, the user sends a transaction using wallet software uh, then uh, wallet software signs the transaction uh, using the sender's uh, private key then transaction is broadcasted to the bitcoin network using a flooding algorithm then fourth step is uh, verification uh, mining nodes who are listening for the transaction verify and include this transaction in the uh, next block uh, to be mined uh, and but before uh, uh, placing this uh, transactions in the block uh, that transactions are kept in a uh, memory buffer and that memory buffer is called uh, transaction pool uh, 
uh, then mining starts uh, fifth step uh, step is mining will start uh, which is the process by which um, blockchain is secured and new coins are generated as a reward for the miners who spend appropriate computational uh, resources uh, so mining um, as we know that miners get the reward um, for verification uh, so this mining process is a secured process and new coins are generated as a reward for the miners uh, miners get in incentive miners get uh, coins and because of that uh, miners uh, will uh, spend their resources uh, their computational resources uh, for verifying the transaction uh, once a miner solves the proof of work problem uh, once the miners will verify the transaction it broads it broadcast uh, the newly mined block uh, to the network uh, the nodes uh, verify the block uh, then uh, the nodes uh, who will receive the uh, block they will uh, verify the block and propagate the block further and uh, confirmation start to generate uh, so after each verification by node the confirmations are generated and uh, how many number of confirmations are generated uh, depending on that uh, the transaction is finalized finally the confirmation start to appear uh, in the receiver's wallet uh, so receiver uh, node uh, has the wallet software and how many number of confirmations are received uh, that number will start appearing on the receiver's wallet and after approximately three confirmation uh, the transaction is considered finalized and uh, confirmed and the block is created and block is inserted in the uh, blockchain so how many number of confirm confirmations are required uh, for completing the transaction uh, that depends on the design of the uh, bitcoin network and its uh, setting uh, so uh, this uh, how many number of confirmations uh, are required to uh, finalize the transaction to confirm the transaction uh, that may uh, vary but uh, there are uh, generally three to six uh, confirmations are required uh, to finalize the transaction so this is um, how the transactions are uh, processed or you can say uh, transaction uh, life cycle uh, then transaction fee uh, as in the previous session also we have studied uh, transaction fees are charged by the miners uh, miners get the reward miners get the coins for uh, transaction verification because miners spend their time miners uh, spend their uh, computational resources uh, for verifying the transaction then the fee is charged uh, depending upon the size and weight of the uh, transaction transaction fees are calculated uh, by subtracting the sum of outputs and the sum of uh, sum of inputs and sum of outputs a simple formula can be used you can see uh, fee is equal to sum of inputs minus sum of um, outputs so dear students uh, this transaction fee uh, fees uh, in the bot, uh, bitcoin network is not fixed uh, the transactions uh, transaction fees are not fixed by the bitcoin protocol and are not mandatory uh, even a transaction with no fee will be processed uh, in due course but may take a very long time so this uh, um, uh, transaction fees are not fixed and uh, this transaction fee is not mandatory uh, but if the transaction don't have any fee uh, then that transaction may require a long time uh, to complete uh, the reason is that uh, the miners prefer uh, to pick up the transactions with higher fees because miners get the reward for uh, verifying the transaction and if the miners get higher reward uh, the transactions uh, which have higher uh, transaction fee miners will like to um, uh, pick up such type of transactions for verification uh, so uh, however uh, uh, the uh, the uh, bitcoin network uh, 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 in bitcoin network uh, the transaction can be completed without fee also uh, but that transactions uh, uh, the transaction may require long time uh, to complete uh, so uh, 
the time for transaction confirmation uh, usually ranges from 10 minutes uh, minutes to uh, 12 hours in some cases and transaction time is dependent on the transaction fee how many uh, how much time is required uh, to complete the transaction uh, that uh, depends on uh, the transaction fee and network activity if the network act, uh, is very busy uh, then naturally transaction will take longer time to process and if you pay a higher fee uh, then your transaction is more likely to be picked by the miners uh, if you uh, specify higher fee uh, in your transaction uh, then such type of transactions are uh, picked up uh, by the miners early for verification and uh, there is a chance that uh, the your transaction is completed uh, within time uh, so if you pay a higher fee uh, then your transaction is more likely to be picked by miners first uh, due to additional uh, incentive uh, due to additional incentive uh, you provide to the miners uh, it is the chance that the your transaction is picked up early and that transactions may be verified and confirmed uh, as early as possible because of higher incentive uh, fees uh, so this is why the reason uh, why the uh, transactions fee varies in the uh, bitcoin network this fee is not uh, fixed Uh, then uh, we have to study uh, the transaction data structure uh, this transaction data structure is a data structure that contains various fields uh, that fields are version number input uh, counter uh, list of inputs and then output counter uh, list of outputs and lock time uh, so in the next slide uh, we will uh, see uh, these fields uh, one by one Uh, so you can see uh, transaction data in previous uh, figure we have seen uh, the transaction data structure contains uh, various fields uh, the first field is version number uh, this version number is of 4 bytes and this version number is used to specify rules uh, to be used by the miners and nodes uh, for transaction processing so this version number will specify uh, the rules uh, that are to be used by the miners and nodes for transaction processing and then second field is input counter and uh, this is of 1 to 9 bytes uh, the number uh, this specifies the number of inputs included in the uh, transaction uh, then next field is list of input and size is not fixed size is variable uh, each input is composed of several fields in this uh, list of inputs uh, there are uh, number of inputs and each input has several fields including uh, previous transactions hash uh, previous transactions output index uh, then transaction input uh, script length uh, transaction input uh, script uh, then uh, optional sequence number and the first transaction in a block is also called a coin based transaction uh, it specifies one or more transaction inputs uh, then next field in the transaction data structure is output counter uh, this output counter is of 1 to uh, 9 bytes a positive integer uh, this is positive integer representing the number of outputs then next field in the transaction data structure is a list of outputs uh, this uh, list of outputs uh, contains uh, outputs uh, included in the transaction and size of uh, this uh, is a list of inputs field is variable uh, it depends on how many number of inputs are there and how many number of outputs are there uh, so list of inputs and list of output fields the length is uh, variable and lock time lock time field last field of this uh, data structure is lock time uh, this is of 4 bytes and this field defines the earliest time when a transaction becomes uh, valid so these are the different fields in the transaction data structure version number input counter uh, list of uh, inputs output counter list of outputs and uh, lock time uh, then next data structure is uh, transaction input data structure uh, so this transaction input data structure is shown in the figure uh, it contains uh, various field uh, like transaction hash output uh, index uh, 
uh, script length, uh, then unlocking script, uh, then sequence number. So these are the uh, different fields uh, in the input data structure. So in next slide, uh, we will see these fields one by one. Uh, so before uh, understanding the uh, fields of transaction input data structure, uh, we have to understand one concept. Uh, each input spends a previous output. Uh, so this concept is uh, somehow confusing not to understand. Uh, I will read the sentence again. Uh, each input spends a previous output. Uh, so uh, in this uh, Bitcoin network, each input spends a previous uh, output. Uh, that means it will spend the output from the previous transaction. Uh, what is this output? Uh, this output uh, uh, also uh, we uh, for better understanding we can assume that this is nothing but a amount. Uh, some in previous uh, transaction uh, uh, if uh, we have some balance in our account uh, and then that transaction is processed and then after transaction uh, you have some account in the uh, you have some balance in your account and then uh, that uh, balance that amount is available for the next transaction in the next transaction uh, you will operate on that some uh, on that amount uh, you may uh, have uh, you may add some uh, further amount into this amount or either you may deduct that means you may you may credit or you may uh, debit uh, so whatever the amount is available in the uh, previous transaction uh, whatever the number of bitcoins available and then in the next transaction next transaction will operate on that on that amount and so each input spends a previous output or we can say uh, each transaction spends a previous uh, balance uh, uh, we can interpret this sentence in a different uh, way uh, so each output is considered as unspent transaction output so this is new term uh, you try to understand each output is considered as unspent uh, transaction output. So whatever the output from previous transaction, uh, it is considered as unspent transaction output because this output is available uh, uh, for spend uh, for spending by the uh, next transaction. Uh, so this is unspent amount. This is the balance amount and next transaction can operate on this amount and it can consume uh, it can spend uh, the amount from the previous uh, transaction so each input is considered as unspent transaction output uh, uh, this term is also called utxo uh, so each out uh, each output is considered as uh, unspent transaction output or you can say utxo until an input consumes it uh, so input will consume the previous unspent transaction output and UTXO is an unspent uh, transaction uh, transaction output that can be spent as an input to a new transaction whatever the amount whatever uh, the balance is available in the previous transaction uh, that transaction that uh, amount that balance can be spent uh, that can be utilized that can be con consumed by a new transaction uh, so this concept we have to understand so uh, dear students, whenever uh, we go further, uh, the several new terms are used uh, in this Bitcoin uh, or uh, blockchain network. Uh, so don't con confuse with these terms. Uh, it may be difficult for you uh, to understand these terms uh, for the time being. But as we progress uh, in the uh, subject, uh, these uh, terms will get clear to you. Uh, so don't worry about this uh, for the time being uh, you only remember that each input spends a previous output and previous output is called unspent transaction output uh, so transaction input data structure contains uh, fields uh, first field is transaction hash uh, it is of 32 bytes and this is the hash of the previous transaction uh, with unspent transaction output then output index it is of 4 bytes and this is the previous transactions output index that is utx uh, unspent transaction output to be uh, spent and then script length uh, 
this is the size of unlocking uh, script. Uh, so, this is again a new term script. Uh, so, in coming sessions uh, it will become clear to you what is this script. Uh, then uh, next field in the input data structure is unlocking script. Uh, the size of uh, uh, this unlocking script is variable because it depends on the length of the script and this length is not fixed. Input script uh, uh, which satisfies the requirements of the uh, locking script. Then sequence number it is of 4 bytes and usually disabled or contains uh, lock time and disabled uh, is represented by uh, the value. You can see 0 x uh, then f f uh, you can count the number of f. So, this is the uh, format of transaction uh, input data structure which contain different fields. Uh, transaction hash, output index, script length, unlocking script and sequence and number. And then output data structure, output data structure have three fields uh, and they contain transaction, uh, they contain instructions for sending the uh, bitcoin. This output data structure contains the uh, instructions for sending the bitcoins. Uh, the first field contains the amount of Satoshis, uh, whereas uh, Satoshis uh, is nothing but a, a unit, a unit use uh, in this uh, Bitcoin network. Uh, so the first field is amount of Satoshis or amount of coins we can say, uh, and whereas the second field contains the size of the locking script, and finally the field uh, third field contains a locking script uh, that holds the conditions that need to be met in order to the in order uh, for the output to be uh, spent. So, there are th three fields uh, in the uh, output data structure value, uh, then script size uh, and uh, locking script. So, this is the format of output data uh, structure. Uh, so, dear students, uh, in this session, uh, we try to uh, learn the uh, formats of data structure, uh, transaction life cycle we have studied, uh, then we have studied the format of transaction data structure, uh, then uh, input data structure and output data structure. So, in this uh, data structure uh, there are some fields uh, that are new and that fields uh, uh, for the time being it may difficult for uh, you to understand uh, this uh, purpose of each field in this data structure. Uh, so, do not worry uh, uh, in coming sessions uh, what is the use of these fields and how these fields are used by the Bitcoin network and that uh, things will become clear to you. So, thanks for watching session. Goodbye.